this week we're trying something a little bit different. Still a takeaway, but obviously not burgers. As you can see there, what's coming up is Pastor Evangelists. So a little bit of B-roll there and also the screenshot of the Dragon's Den, which I think they got rejected on. Obviously kind of a bit of a loss there as they went on to selling it, I believe, in 2021 for something like 40 million to Barilla. So they obviously did pretty well. And yes, okay, it's not the original um, startup as it is now, but I thought, why not? Let's just try something different. And I absolutely love Carbonara. So we're trying Pastor Evangelists and to start off with, yes, it is expensive, but you're paying for kind of the homemade, um, authentic Italian recipes. At least I, w I would suggest. Now, maybe that was more in the sense of the startup uh, initially, and hopefully it's carried on, but I went for the half and half, which we'll, we'll go through in a minute, and with a dessert, just to see what the desserts were like, a lemon tart, which I think a lot of people can honestly say is, is one of the best desserts beyond a cheesecake or I don't know, maybe chocolate fudge cake, but a lemon tart I think is excellent. And yeah, problem was delivery driver all the way from Italy. I, had to, I mean, I take it back. It took him a while, but it was still warm. Obviously not. Anyway, so this week as I'm plating it up, I thought rather than sticking it on the slate and essentially ruining the slate, well, not ruining it, but kind of it going everywhere, I thought I'd just stick it on a plate, which kind of looks a little bit daft, but yeah, it, it was a lot easier to um, consume. And I think being on the black probably would have drowned out a lot of the beef, uh, the beef ragu, half and half. So I thought, yeah, I'll stick it on a white plate, which kind of highlights it a lot better. So to start with, yeah, it was half and half. Uh, again, not cheap. Um, you know, by the time I'd added a few little extras, cheese and pancetta, which I thought they were just going to put on the carbonara, but they, they put on both, which is fine. Um, we got to like nearly 20 quid, which £10 each. That's, that's a lot of money for pasta. But as you can see there, the beef ragu was... It was, I guess, authentic. It was, it tasted slow cooked. It was kind of the rich, sort of deep flavors. And it had a, you know, bits of, I'd say a fair bit of beef in it and tomato, um, but not as much as I kind of thought. But then I thought to myself, well, Italian um, sauces are usually quite thin and the pasta is, is the main point. And that was the fusely, fusely pasta and they didn't have spaghetti weirdly which would have been nice with the carbonara but uh, or tagliatelle but it was a limited selection for the half and half so as you can see there half and half carbonara on one and i'm not entirely sure beef chianti ragu but it was definitely beef ragu so i'm assuming it's the same thing um could be wrong but straight away with the what i love is carbonara it was kind of difficult to say exactly the same as a as an authentic carbonara because it wasn't spaghetti but the actual sauce was nice in terms of egg no cream and obviously the pancetta on top um was, was really good it's nice and thick so it wasn't a thin sauce and yep stupidly i saw the bag writing of heating it up after i'd eaten it all so yeah complete moron but either way uh, everything as you can see they're well cooked and I guess you could say authentic, you know, I, I've never been to Italy to say it definitely is authentic, but as you can see there, should have read the bag. Oops, but it was still warm. I mean, it was, I was less than a, less than a mile or two from, uh, from the restaurant, so it was still warm. Um, I had pecorino cheese additional, um, again, probably more for the carbonara, but it actually was quite nice on, on the beef ragu. But because the pasta was the same on both, it was it was a little bit different. I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's a bit difficult to say, you know, authentic because you probably wouldn't have fusely with both. But as you can see there, prices were not cheap. Um, I think it was good quality. The pasta was all cooked al dente. It wasn't squidgy or soft. Um, it, you know, it was to the bite. Uh, so uh, pasta cooked well. And there was a fair amount. The portions were pretty decent. I was thinking it would be literally like a, a split cardboard box, but it, it, was, it was more or less filling up both of those boxes, as you can see there in the background. So good, excellent, I would say, to go towards, um, which you'll see in the rating, but 
On to finishing off the lemon tart, it was pretty nice. I mean, the lemon curd was, was nice and kind of, I guess, fruity, but in terms of lemon, um, a little dusting of icing sugar on the top and a kind of crumbly, but not, it, it didn't destroy or, or fall to bits base. Um, so that, that's kind of all I've got to say about that. It's, it's, it's not out of this world, but it definitely isn't, um, it isn't a bad lemon tart. You probably could go somewhere else that do dessert specifically and, and get a better tart, which is, you know, probably the same for a lot of places, to be fair. Um, but as a kind of like gourmet sort of vibe to it, it, it definitely was uh, sumptuous, I think is probably the best word. But overall, a very nice meal. And obviously, as I say, they sold out and made a lot of money from it. So they clearly did something very well. So 8.5 and 8.5, both the same. And I'd say the 9 out of 10 as an excellent tart. I appreciate you watching. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And if you haven't, check out these videos.